Hi, Dr. Lyons here, of course. This video is an introduction to a class project. The project involves climbing and measuring an alpine climbing tower on my university's campus. The, my students need to estimate the weight of the tower and then uh, measure the dimensions and angles between the members of the tower and then try to estimate the uh, forces that are acting on some of the joints in the tower using a static analysis. This is a picture I took of the Alpine Climbing Tower on our university campus. It's made out of uh, a lot of pressure treated lumber and there are a lot of connections holding the lumber together. There are steel bolts in every one of these connections, uh, or we'll call those pin joints. And it's actually the, the steel bolts that are uh, going through the connections that hold this together. The ropes are really just uh, not much more than decoration. They're not, uh, they're not critical for the structural integrity of the tower, which is, which is a relief. So the problem that I am asking my students to address related to the climbing tower is to determine the forces in the members of the Alpine Tower. So the question is what are the forces in the members of the tower. That's a pretty complicated problem and so I'm going to make things a little bit simpler by asking my students to just look at one joint and figure out what are the forces in the three members at that one joint. The member that's coming uh, down that's supporting the tower and these two cross members that tie the three legs of the tower together. So if we're just looking so if we're just looking at one joint I have three members to consider. And I'm going to say that the two cross members are symmetrical about uh, a line that is in the same plane as the leg. And I'm going to call that angle theta. the angle that the cross members make with this line I'm going to call phi and so the total angle between the two cross members is two times phi. So that's some of the geometry that uh, we are going to have to deal with when we're working on this problem. The other thing that we're going to need to know is the weight of the tower and we need to have uh, actually two numbers for the weight. We need to know the weight of the tower for everything that is above the members, that is everything that's above the joints, uh, because that's all of that weight is being applied to the three le by the three legs. And then we are going to need to know the weight of the tower below the joints 
which is the weight of the three cross members, because all of that is weight is pulling down on the joints from below the joint where it's all of that is is pulling down from below the position where these are bolted together. So we've got the weight of the tower pressing down. We have the weight of the cross members pulling down. And this is all supported by the little stub of the leg that is below the joint. To consider the, the statics perspective of this problem, we're considering that the tower is not moving in our analysis. And therefore, so if it's not moving, the net force on each part of the tower is zero. There are three parts to this instructional video. The first part, we will look at the concepts of forces and specifically the concept of a force as a vector. And some of the concepts related to forces as vector include resolving forces into components, resolving forces, adding forces together, and the concept of equilibrium at a point. The second part to the instructional video will involve the analysis of a two-dimensional truss. The 2D truss analysis will be a lot simpler than the analysis of the 3D uh, Alpine Tower, and it will allow us to introduce some concepts related to modeling uh, pin joints, how to model forces in bars or uh, the, 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 the wood that that tower is made out of, and how to combine the joints and bars into trusses and do the static analysis. The third part of the instructional video series will address the Alpine Tower itself and how to do the analysis on one joint of the Alpine Tower. And the uh, video will talk about the data that you need to do this analysis and how we develop a solution for one of the joints in terms of figuring out what the equations are that we need to do mop the, answer, the problems. And it will summarize the uh, the answer. There is some useful trig that I would like to review and some useful uh, geometry. 
that I'm going to assume everybody knows when we're doing the problems, and so yeah, I'm just going to include those in this little introductory video. And if I draw an XY coordinate frame, and I put a triangle on that coordinate frame, I can label the sides of the triangle as H for the hypotenuse, O, and A. And say that this angle between the hypotenuse and angle A is theta. The, this is a right triangle, and so that's a 90 degree angle, and so the angle up here is going to be 90 minus theta, of course. And the trig functions to um, relate the, the angles and the sides are as follows. The sine of theta, the opposite over the hypotenuse. The cosine of theta is the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. The tangent of theta is the opposite over adjacent. And sometimes in solving the problems, we will uh, find it convenient to relate the tangent to the sine and the cosine. And the tangent of theta is also equal to the sine of the theta divided by the cosine of the theta. And some other properties of the uh, triangle that will be used are that uh, we can convert, we can calculate the hypotenuse from the square root of the sum of the two sides, so h squared is O squared plus A squared, or H is the square root of O squared plus A squared. And if we need to know theta, but we know the side's lengths, then we can use the inverse tan function. And the opposite length and the adjacent length to theta. So theta is uh, inverse tan of O over A. It's, the next thing to review are the concepts of complementary and congruent angles. So again, I've drawn my coordinate frame. And I have, I have the same triangle that I had drawn before. And I have an angle theta, an angle 90. And I'm going to go ahead and label this angle up here as phi. So the concept of complementary angles is as follows. Complementary complementary angles just means that theta plus phi is equal to 90 degrees. The next concept is that of congruent angles. And that will help us find out what is the angle alpha. And the properties of congruent angles say that since This line is parallel to this line, and they're both cut by this line, that phi and alpha are equal. So this concludes the introduction to the analysis of the forces in the members of USC's Alpine Tower. Um, please uh, watch the 
related videos in the order that I provided, forces a vector, 2D truss analysis, and then alpine tower analysis. Thank you.